What other information do I have on Martin Luther King? Now, Hal, why don't you tell us now about uh, the, the originating of uh, this holiday that's about to be celebrated tomorrow? Back with me working with Dr. King and raising funds to keep the Southern Christian Leadership Conference going. He was on his way this time down to Memphis because uh, the garbage men were having a big fight. They'd gone on strike and they were really suffering financially. And he said, I got to go down, Hal, and build them up. So we were in Newark, New Jersey. We saw a little girl on the sidelines and he said to her, she was sitting there crying. He said, why are you crying? You're black and you're beautiful. And it was the first time I'd ever heard that slogan. I think it was probably the first time that he had done it. Anyway, we had a benefit that night in Newark, New Jersey at one of the schools to raise money for Dr. King. He said they need a lot of money going down into Memphis. And um, so we got over there and all of the groups and the people, the place was packed. We had over 3,000 people. And then uh, right after the old second group went on, a little girl came up to me. She had been in the ladies room, she said, and she heard on the radio in the ladies room, Dr. King had been shot. And I said, oh, no, no. She said, yes, it has. I said, well, you go back now and let me know anything else you hear. But I'm not going to tell anybody here anything yet. Anyway, she came back a little bit later and she said, Mr. Jackson, Dr. King is dead. I said, oh, my Lord, here we go. And we had to place 3,000 people that we had to get out of there, get back to their homes without a problem. There was one thing to do. Take the stage, tell the people sorrowfully what had happened, and ask them to please do what Dr. King would want them to do. Go home quietly. We, I led them out, the buses, the subways, uh, and everybody, not one problem, because everybody loved Dr. King and lived for it. On the way back, I came over the George Washington Bridge, living in Harlem, and um, at 135th Street and Lenox Avenue. And by then, they had started to burn up Lenox Avenue. The folks were burning up and destroying property. And um, WLIB, our sister station, we won at the air. And they stayed on. It was a daytime, but we stayed on there because of the emergency. In other words, you were on for 24 hours instead of going off at sunset. That's right. And we got on there and asked everybody to please please stop all the violence. Dr. King would not want it. But it was a very sad situation. Anyway, it finally cooled down. The next morning, uh, on the way back over the bridge, I said, you know, I think of the great people. There's no one in our life greater than Dr. Martin Luther King. As we're coming over the bridge and coming in there, the sun was just rising. And I said, uh, you know, we need to make a birthday for Dr. King. And I didn't go to sleep. I just took a shower and went down to the radio station. And I said, I'm going to start collecting letters. Collecting letters to make Dr. King's birthday a national holiday. I started off at 6 o'clock mentioning to the people what had happened. And then asking them to write in and to bring letters saying we want Dr. King to have a national birthday holiday. We uh, collected many, many. I called um, uh, Shirley Chisholm, uh, Honorable Shirley Chisholm, and uh, John Conyers, and I asked them, if we collect these letters and signatures, would they introduce the bill if I brought them into Washington? They said, absolutely. So we kept on. We went to schools. We went to churches. We went everywhere. And I say we, I give credit to everybody. No one person. And we just went on and collected, collected. Finally, I called them and told them we had six million signatures and letters. And we have four truckloads. So we took them down to Washington. I gave them to them. They introduced the bill to make his birthday a national holiday. At that time, the climate was very not appreciable for a Martin Luther King birthday. Anyway, they introduced a bill, 
and they couldn't get the bill through. But let's go on. We kept at it, and finally Stevie Wonder was making it visible and got it through a few years later. I believe it was eight years later, and now here's a Sunday classic tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King. And that is deep down within all of us an instinct. It's a kind of drum major instinct, a desire to be out front, a desire to lead the parade, a desire to be first. And it is something that runs the whole gamut of life. And so before we condemn them, let us see that we all have the drum major instinct 